Do you see a problem with this type here? If you don't, you may want to continue watching this video. Today, I'm going to show you a really simple TypeScript pattern that explores what the problem here is and how we can solve that. So let's jump into it. So as I said, we're going to define what the problem is first. So as I said, if we have a endpoint, for example, that's going to return data. So when it's a success, it's going to return data with a string and a message. And when it's an error, it's going to return an error. The endpoint here is subscribing to my channel. I recommend you do that. But as I said, what we have is a type here that just explores that. So it's got status. It can be three types. So we've added loading in here for the front end just to show when it's loading. Uh, we have error and we have success. And again, it's going to have error and data, but we have optionals here. And this is typically how some people will do this. So you'll define a load of optionals because sometimes they're not there. As I said, data's not going to be there if it's an error. However, this does create a bit of a problem. So if I go ahead and add in some different sort of examples of what we may have got back from the server. As I said, we can have that loading state, so status is loading. We could have that error state where the status is, shows as an error and it has an error in it. And we could have that success state where it has success and it has data. But what you'll see here is there's actually a problem is TypeScript hasn't complained to us when we have an error in this success object here. But that should never happen. As I said, from our definition that we had up here is there will never be an error when the data is success. So how do we get TypeScript to know that error shouldn't be there when there's type success? And again, by the same flip of the coin, the error shouldn't be there when success is um, or when status is success. So what we need to use is something called a discriminated union. So if we come up here and we change our type, I won't change these definitions down here. What you're going to want to do is define our first one. So that's just going to be status and that's going to be loading. And that's our first one. Now we want to use this pipe symbol and create a, another object. So this is going to be status and let's call that success. And then under here is where we can then define that data. So we're going to call that ID with string and message with string. So this is just what we had before. And then the last one we have is we have that status of error. So how are we going to handle that? What we're going to do is we're again just going to repeat the same thing of status error. And then it's just going to have error, which is a type of error. And there we go. That's what our new type will look like using discriminated unions. Now, the advantage of this, as I said, is you can see here TypeScript has now picked up is object literal may only specify known properties and error doesn't exist on this type because it now knows that it's within this union here. So it's within the status success one because we've changed the status up here to success. So the same thing would happen if I change this to error, it will now moan that we have data here because how can you have data when it's come back as an error? Now, this is really useful, for example, in React components. So if I show you that, if I define a, let's say, a basic component here, and in here we use some state. So if I say server data, and let's call that set server data, and I just do a use state here, obviously you would have this coming back from some way of how, however you're loading your data within your front end. And this isn't just sort of a React only tip. This can be useful even in just basic TypeScript or any other sort of framework. And in here, let's just make sure that this state knows it's going to be of type server data, however. I'm also going to go in here and define it so it has a default. So that's going to be status and let's call that loading. Now, there is a slight issue that you may run into when doing this um, that you have not run into before. And that's going to be if we destructure this. So if I come in here and say, I want to get the status, I want to get this um, error, and I want to get the data off server data. What you'll see is it will actually now moan at us. And that's because it doesn't know which type we're in here. It doesn't know whether we're in the status union or not. This is where we need to narrow down our type instead. So if we got rid of that. What we could do is say, if server data dot status is equal to success, then we can access our data object by doing const data equals server data. Or actually, we can do the shorthand. We can do data equals server data. So now this knows that it's that type ID message string. As I said before, when we had this up there earlier, it will moan at you because it doesn't know where it is. But now it does know because we've done this type checking here or this narrowing down, sorry, this type narrowing to say that everything within this if now 
knows it's in the success. So it's only going to be looking at that success union there. And the same thing would happen for error, for example. So if I change this to uh, error in this bit here, you'll see that it will now moan at me and say that data doesn't exist within that object, but we could change this to error and that does exist. This is really useful if you want to do even component level sort of variants. So if we had, for example, a button with a variant, so if I did something like type um, button uh, props or something like that, what we could do is that equals, and then let's say I had a variant and let's say I just called this basic. So for a basic button, I literally just want the simple basic stuff. But however, what if I wanted a button, let's say with a description underneath or within the button, what I could do is I could come in here and then do a union and say variant is going to be with text. And then under here, I could define the text as a string. Now, why this is better is because as we defined earlier, the problem is someone could have earlier passed in a type of where the variant was basic, but they could have passed in text and TypeScript wouldn't have actually moaned again about it. However, here with this setup and these discriminated unions that I've shown you, TypeScript will now moan if you put in the variant as basic and you put in text with it. So you'll see that they wouldn't render the text and you'd know where the issue is. So as I said, guys, it's a really useful tip. It's pretty basic, but you'll begin to use this everywhere once you've seen it and you'll wonder how you weren't using it before. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And as always, please subscribe and thank you for watching.